What's up guys, Fran here. So today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the NES Classic. Now if you don't know what it is, it's a small console. Nintendo dropped it not too long ago. It basically is in the exact same shape of the NES console and it runs NES games. It's packed with about 30 games and people have been going pretty crazy over this device. It's sold out everywhere, Walmart, Best Buy, GameStop, wherever you can think of. The only places you can pretty much find it is Amazon and eBay, and it's ridden with a bunch of resellers who have been pricing it anywhere from today when I checked it, about $250, all the way up to people on eBay selling it for you know upwards of $500, $600, and the highest we saw was about $30,000. See, me growing up, I've always been a pretty technical guy, so I was always into ROMs and emulators. So since the NES Classic isn't exactly readily available at this time, I decided to show you guys how to make your own NES Classic, or rather, your own RetroPie. RetroPie is an emulation station that can run Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, MAME, you name it. It runs a host of different games. So let's run through it. Okay, so for this build guide, you're going to need a few parts. First off, you need a Raspberry Pi, preferably a Pi 3, but a Pi 2 will work as well. At the time of recording this video, you can find it on Amazon for about 29 to 35 bucks. You'll also need a USB micro power cable. You might have one of these lying around your house from an old phone, but just in case you don't, you can find them also on Amazon for about 5 bucks. Next, you'll need a pie case. The Raspberry Pi can look a little bit intimidating while it's naked, so I recommend picking one of these up. A case you can also pick up on Amazon for about 7 bucks. They're pretty useful because they provide protection for the naked Raspberry Pi, and they also make it look a little bit cooler. They come in an assortment of shapes and sizes, and you can also probably pick up a 3D printed one in the shape of an NES if you really want to get that NES classic look and feel. Next, you'll need a micro SD card. Now this will act as your hard drive, so keep in mind when picking out a size, the bigger the better. My personal recommendation is around 16 to 32 gigabytes. They also normally come with the micro SD to regular SD card adapter, so don't be too worried about picking up one of these. Finally, you'll need a flash drive. This will be how you transfer your games to your RetroPie. So try to pick up something that's either the equivalent size or smaller, but try not to get anything larger. For example, if I get a 32 gigabyte micro SD card, I'm gonna try to pick up a 16 or 32 gigabyte flash drive. Now let's talk controllers. So this is where your mileage may vary. Personally, I have large hands, so I opted for the Xbox One controller. Alternatively, if you really want that retro look and feel, they do sell NES, SNES, and Sega Genesis controllers online in both USB, wired, and Bluetooth wireless versions. The wireless options can become pretty costly, so keep in mind when you go looking for them, that can sort of blow up the cost of this entire project. And of course you'll need access to a computer, it doesn't matter if it's Mac or PC, you're also going to need access to a display, I personally recommend a computer monitor, but it also will work on a television set just fine. Okay so now let's get started. I'll leave a couple links in the video description below for all the things you're going to need for this build guide. First you're going to want to download the RetroPie OS. Navigate to the link below and go ahead and download it. It's a pretty big download, so it might take some time. So once the RetroPie OS is downloaded, you can start prepping your SD card. For Mac users, insert the SD card into your computer, then load up the Apple Pie Baker. Click on the Noob Setup button down here. Once that process is done running, go ahead and click on the Image button. Navigate to where you downloaded the RetroPie operating system, and then go ahead and execute that. Play the waiting game, and then once it's done, your SD card is ready, you can go ahead and eject it. For Windows users, you're going to go ahead and load up the Win32 Disk Imager, click on the small disk icon to the right, navigate to the folder that contains the RetroPie OS image, and then go ahead and hit the right button. Make sure on Windows you extract the RetroPie image first. Okay, so now you're going to take that ejected SD card, and you're going to go ahead and insert it into your Raspberry Pi. Your next step is to plug in your controller display cable, and then the USB micro power cable in that order. You will now see a loading screen, and then once again we're going to play the waiting game. The first time the RetroPie operating system loads up, it might take some time, so don't be alarmed if it doesn't load immediately. Okay, so once OS is loaded, you'll see the screen to go ahead and configure your controller, run through the process, it's pretty simple press up, down, left, right, depending on the corresponding prompts on the screen. So now let's talk about the game files. 
Now I can't link you directly to any of these locations in which you can download these files, but if you're pretty resourceful, you can jump on Google, do a quick search for the console you want to play, followed by the word ROMs, and you'll find plenty of information on how to acquire these files. Okay, so now that you've acquired your files, the next thing you're going to do is get them onto your Raspberry Pi. To do that, what you're going to do is insert a USB flash drive into your computer and ensure that it's formatted for FAT32. For Mac users, open up Disk Utility, select the drive on the left, click on the Erase button at the top, and then select FAT32 from the drop down menu. Click for Windows users, go ahead and navigate to this PC, find the drive in the menu, right click on it, click format, hit the drop down menu and make sure that FAT32 is selected. Go ahead and execute that and once again play the waiting game. Once you've completed this step, go into that freshly formatted USB drive and create a folder labeled RetroPie. Go ahead and eject this USB drive and then insert it back into your RetroPie. What you're going to notice is there's going to be an activity light flashing if there is an activity light on your USB drive. If not, you can let it sit for about one or two minutes. Once you've waited out that time, you can go ahead and remove the USB drive and then insert it back into your computer. What you'll now notice is that there are a number of folders that have been created on the drive. These folders represent each one of the emulators that the RetroPie now supports. For example, if I want to play any SNES titles, what I'll do is take those special SNES files, drop them inside of that SNES folder, and voila, I'm done. So once you've copied over your files to your USB drive, you can go ahead and once again eject that and then insert it back into the RetroPie. This time it'll be a little bit longer because it's now copying files off of the USB drive onto the micro SD card and notoriously this is a longer process. You can go ahead and now reset the RetroPie and voila, you will now have menu options for each one of the games you loaded into those folders. Okay guys, so that's gonna wrap up this tutorial. What do you think? Are you interested in making your own RetroPie or are you gonna stick with the NES Classic? Was this guide easy enough for you to follow along with? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you like videos like this and you wanna see more of them, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button as well as hit the subscribe button because I'll be sure to be bringing you guys other really awesome content. Either way, once again, my name is Fran. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I hope I see you guys in the next one.